And welcome back to the Sunday Pulse, where we ar argue passionately in English, but we all wish we spoke Korean so that the show would be more epic. Guys, we're done with the first half of the show. It's time for my favorite part, where we're going to be taking off the covers and going hashtag no filter. It's time to take a stand. Guys, the way this format's going to work is very similar, except this time, no matter what, you guys get rebuttals and a rebuttal to the rebuttal, the re-rebuttal, as Kevin would like to call it. You get no re 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 rebuttals. It, there's only four. There's four max statements. Although maybe last closing comments because these topics I think are very good. The first one that we're going to be cover is a quite a contested <laughs> one with the signing of a new female to the scene, Barbie Prime. <laughs> Prime has very clearly said that we want more marketing potential. Barbie is reported to be the girlfriend of Gerard, Prime's coach, and while her playing skill is not mentioned anywhere publicly, internet vigilantes have already discovered that her profile is in masters. This brings up an interesting topic that is rarely addressed in a fair fashion on the internet, female StarCraft II players. So Ben and Kev, I want to preface that this isn't necessarily emphasizing about Barbie Prime or anyone specifically, but I want to ask as a general whole, is signing female StarCraft II players a proper allocation of team resources? And what about the players that are quote unquote more deserving? We'll start with you, Ben, one minute. All right, I'm, uh, I'm happy to jump into this one. Is it a proper allocation of team resources for Team Prime? What resources? We know that a lot of the uh, Korean teams are actually struggling uh, with funding. If any organization in the world uh, has, has any business hiring female gamers to improve their marketability, it's an organization like an EG, a brand that is making money by selling something. It is ludicrous, in my opinion, for uh, an unskilled female programmer to be picked up by uh, a non-EG or maybe a non-liquid because what in the world good does it serve? How does it promote any brand? How does it push any product? How does it better that team? We can talk about Kevin's favorite female pro gamer, Flo. And her, stay oh. on, and her stay on Quantic. What did her time on Quantic do for that organization? Absolutely nothing. It made no sense. Maybe she goes to DreamHack and she wins and she proves me wrong, and that would be great. But when she doesn't make it out of the groups, I'm going to ask once again, why does it make any sense to sign this person? Kev, you have the floor one minute. Uh, first of all, I highly doubt that like Barbie Prime cost Prime a whole lot of money. As you already said, she was perhaps somehow affiliated with the team. We had Alex Garfield on the show next uh, last week, and if we take anyone serious, it has to be Alex, because Alex has built up EG into a super successful uh, multi-gaming organization, and he said it very well. Results alone are not going to do it for your business. You're going to need exposure as well. And as simple as it is, girls bring in way more exposure than a random unknown player who might be slightly more skilled, but if the girl brings in like or reaches like five times the amount of eyeballs it is definitely worth to have at least one girl in your team and uh, I don't I don't really see any problem with it uh, yes it might be unfair for that relatively unknown uh, guy gamer who might be better than the girl but hey life is unfair sometimes I think we all know that I think you both bring up really interesting points, but Ben, did you want to counterpoint? I'll simply ask what female pro gamer has brought in any eyeballs for anybody. Okay. So if you take a look at all the interviews that, for instance, you mentioned Flo when she was in Quantic. If you take a look at all the interviews that all the Quantic players used to give uh, in the, during that time at Quantic, whenever they went to MLG, which one do you think has by far the most views? I think C alone has more views than any of the other guys who used to be on Quantic, the former Quantic, that is. Do you want to put money on that? Yes, I will put money on that. That, that Flo <laughs> has more views than any of the other players formerly on Quantum. Okay, well, for instance, how many... Uh, okay, well, you can actually... Let's do that one MLG and I, for instance. Yeah, you can, you can look that up. No, well, we'll, we'll has look more that up and we'll get back to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> because... But, yeah. but you see, Kevin, the point is, what did it do for Quantic? What did Flo do for Since Quantic? Since when is reaching eyeballs not a good thing for a team? What did it do for Quantic? It, it reached people. It gave exposure to the brand. In what More way? In, in what way? How successful was Quantic? That organization was run into the ground because <laughs> they were hemorrhaging money, because they were yeah. paying players to be on their staff, and they were okay. spending money poorly mm. in other places. Now it's you're just ridiculous, That's completely man. off topic. That's it, like it, it is off topic, and I'm going to try to reel you in, Ben, but I understand where you're coming from. I want to redirect the conversation then to, to this question. How I, I, is... You know, you're, you're talking about signing girls to a mid-leveling team. We're talking about teams in NA, for example, that didn't have exposure otherwise because they're not getting results. Can you take a team seriously then for signing a female player if she has no results? We can understand someone like Scarlet, for example, who has won WCS Canada, but how can you take another pro gamer girl seriously if you're going to sign someone just for a publicity stunt? Kevin. Well, I mean, uh, wh what's wrong with picking up talent? Every now and then, 
guy, uh, a guy gets picked up as well who's relatively unknown. We just say like, hey, we believe in him. We might actually think he can become really good. Just because uh, those girls, uh, for instance, like Medalisk or Flo, whatever, that they might have never won something. That doesn't mean that they might not actually be capable of reaching a certain level. What's wrong with investing into the future? If we, inv if, if we invest into a random unknown guy, then it's all like, ah, cool, cool pickup. It's cool that they don't sign another star, but they actually believe that someone might become good. Who says that these girls cannot be good? Uh, the game Nobody hasn't been saying that the girls can't be good, and there's nothing wrong with a team investing in a promising uh, young talent. Uh, what is r just silly is are for these, again, like Dan said, mid-level teams who don't have many resources to begin with, yeah, but you make spending it their limited amount of funds to send these girls around the country where they're not doing anything. Well, it depends a lot on how you want to uh, use your money. Do I agree that it's useless to send players? That doesn't even go just for girls, in my opinion. This goes for some teams in general. I think it's really awesome. There are so many cool esports organizations out there who send their players to events. If I would run a team, I would literally only send one or two of my guys on the team to an event. I would let them play in-house practice matches. If you can't dominate the competition online, why would the team want to send a player to all these random events in Europe where they're not going to win anyways? Like, what does that do? What difference does it make if it's a guy or a girl? But that's well, a whole well different we're, 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 we're both going to agree on that. The, these are great points. And Kev, I want to kind of get, because we're talking about idealistically, if a girl was able to provide all that information. But in your opinion, based off what we've seen already in history, have these teams done a good job using the girls that they have? No. No. Absolutely not. And uh, maybe if somebody comes up with a better marketing strategy, maybe if somebody comes up with a better way to promote their players and to get those eyeballs out there. But come on, man. Uh, Alex uh, also, also says that just getting YouTube views is not something that he can take and make a lot of money with sponsors with. Mm -hmm. You've got to have more reach than that. And just because you've got some girl getting interviewed that might get 20,000 hits when, uh, when Illusion getting interviewed gets 15, it doesn't, it, it doesn't have any impact. I also still s uh, think that you highly overrate the amount of resources that are spent. You make it sound like these girls are the highest paid players on the team. Like, come on, it better probably cost anything. Is it useful to send them to every event? Well, I mean, to one event a year or maybe two, three, okay, but not to every. I agree with that. That would be a waste. But that doesn't go once more just for girls. And what you said, like 20 to 15 is not a realistic way of uh, how it really was. Okay. It was more like 70,000 to 5,000. Okay, we're starting to backtrack certain points. Great points all around. I think our... Ticker, our clock guy is kind of confused because we actually went off format. But it's okay. It's my show, so whatever, guys. <laughs> Thank you for a great discussion. Of course, guys, tweet us your opinions at NASL.TV as well as send us feedback because this conversation is only the beginning. But, of course, uh, thank you so much for your opinions. Let's move on to topic number two in Take a Stand as well with streaming. Now, a lot of people say that streaming has contributed to the growth of esports and StarCraft 2, but you can't deny that personal streaming has also conflicted with viewer numbers of tournaments when players are not in that tournament, they feel like they want to make a side form of income and as a result take away viewership numbers that helps tournaments sell packages to advertisers, to sponsors. That's the numbers that impresses lots of people as well as things like fans in attendance. Do you think that streaming should be regulated by an entity, whether it's Blizzard, Twitch, Teams, or, or any other kind of entity, and how should they do it? If not, is there an alternative? I know both of you are very, very opinion on the subject. Kev, let's start off with you. Um, I mean, I know this would be something that's very hard to realize, but yes, eventually I think it would be very good if we would have some sort of an umbrella organization which would say, obviously not for every weekend or for every second tournament, but the few tournaments a year that are really big, in which we know a lot of money has been invested, that on those weekends there might be some sort of a blackout, that the only thing that's gone right, then, uh, right on at that moment is that tournament and I know this would hurt some people but in the end of the day it might actually benefit them as well because the more people would watch that certain tournament on that weekend the more exposure that tournament get perhaps the better a draw get for StarCraft 2 later on and you not being able to stream for one or two days might actually end up in you getting more viewers in the long run because those tournaments bring in more people in the scene now I do know that once more this is something that's very hard to realize but I definitely do think that something is going to happen eventually because as you said like there is just always StarCraft, always, always. And sometimes it does conflict with viewing numbers and some tournaments. I mean, it is kind of sad when you see like an average tournament, like uh, not something insane. Well, actually, I'm kind of drifting off right now. But basically what I'm trying to say is I think eventually it would be good to have right. some sort of umbrella organization. Sorry, but Kevin, it's really hard time. to... 15 minutes later. 
<laughs> ben, absolutely, what do you, you cannot. You absolutely cannot regulate streaming. That would be the worst thing you can do by silencing the people that uh, that promote your game. You're you're taking away from their ability to uh, get more eyes on it. There are, however, different things that you can do to make it more possible to get more eyes on that big tournament. Uh, for instance, we can take Blizzard. Blizzard has the power to say, "Hey, Grubby, you're not to stream while the NASL's show is running." Okay, Grubby, and Grubby's gonna be like. Steve, whatever, but if, if Blizzard says no, they have that power. They do. They can just say, all right, no internet for Grubby. They can ban his account mm -hmm. or whatever. What you could do instead is you could say, hey, Grubby, don't stream during this time, and in exchange at this other time, I'm going to promote your stream in our launcher, in our client. I'm going to put a big window that says Grubby is streaming right now, mm -hmm. and by promoting that player, you're, you're going to drive his viewer numbers while at the same time achieving your other goal of getting less eyes on him at a particular time. Uh, so those viewers are going to go somewhere else, presumably. Uh, this is something that Riot does does to promote, promote good behavior in their pros is something that's been wildly successful and something that I would love to see explored in StarCraft II. Do you think that, that it's fair, though, for the middle level of pros that are trying to build their fan base? Because, again, if a big tournament, if a big name like Grubby, for example, or Stefano is not in a tournament and they're streaming, they're taking 10K amount of viewers, and that might seem very marginal compared to the big picture. But if they're taking away those viewership numbers away from people who can see other up-and-coming future Stefanos, because Stefano was once upon a, one, once upon a time a no-name, do you think that's going to be easy for mid-level pros to be able to rise up to the top if they're not getting the eyeballs too? Do you, you yeah. understand where I'm, where I'm no, going No, I'm not sure this? where you're going with this. How about the mid-level of pros, though? Yes. Do you think that it, this kind of system the Ben's proposing is going to keep funneling the top. The most popular people get more popular, and it's very tough for someone to break into that upper echelon. Uh, to some degree, yes, but I think that will always be tough. I mean, you're always going to have to have something special going on for yourself to make a name out of yourself. Just being a streamer alone, uh, there are very few people who are able to make it like that, and I do feel that you might see one or two guys like that succeed. So that alone, I do not really think is like a valid point. Okay, then what do you, su do, you do you accept Ben's system? Do you think it will work in StarCraft II? Uh, it's something that is interesting, but basically it comes down to the same thing. It would be nice to have some sort of an organization. He said that perhaps Blizzard should just be in charge in it. I think like more like a Twitch umbrella organization in which like you can join in and you say like, hey guys, we have this group of streamers and in the end of the day, what we try to do is bring in more people in the industry. So perhaps by helping each other on certain moments, uh, it's basically the same thing, just done in a different way. And I never said that like my way was the best. I didn't go for like a total blackout. Like no one is allowed to stream. Uh, but in some way that there is some sort of a guideline to follow. That's the sound of backpedaling, Dan. And to come back to your <laughs> previous question, the cream always rises to the top for a reason. Uh, the best guy will eventually get that exposure either by winning tournaments or creating the right content. Maximus Black is a great example. Destiny is a great example. There's plenty of people across other platforms that are fantastic examples. And um, you, you don't have to restrict people's mm -hmm. ability to stream uh, in order to promote them or to promote certain events. There's just there's, there's better ways to allow them to do what they want and, and still uh, grow the overall scene uh, uh, as in the small proposal that I threw out previously. Definitely a, previously. a good rep. Do you have any last comments, Kev, before we close out this, uh, this segment? No, I, I think I think both of us, uh, he's, even though he's saying I'm backpedaling, I think it's basically <laughs> the same thing. I wasn't going to go for a total blackout. And if you would do that, uh, I, I don't understand why or, okay, or which you tournament. You have 100 of my points. Yes, okay. All right. His words. Never mind. Never mind. Be that guy, Ben. Be that guy. <laughs> it's a charity as well as friends here, guys. We're here talking about hard questions, uh, but in the end, we do love streaming. I watch streams all the time. We're not necessarily against it or f uh, trying, to, trying to say we shouldn't stream at all. Uh, streaming Def is awesome. Streaming is definitely awesome, especially because Kevin's going to be streaming later tonight, so this <laughs> is a, a personal plug. Or Kevin, ain't that, that right? Stream. You guys have been streaming together, and it's been really fun. Like, I tune in a little bit when I'm right before I go to bed. And, uh, these two are, like, taking turns, alternating, <laughs> kind of feeding off of each other. Uh, if you guys Losing together. And we're both awful. <laughs> <laughs> Crying protest. If you guys haven't together. checked it out, y'all should really do it. They usually stream kind of late, but it's really fun. So Thank you. Thank you, Ben. But that won't earn you any bonus points. <laughs> Well, that, it's all Kev's streams. I wasn't, I wasn't fishing for Dan points. I was fishing <laughs> for karma over here. No worries, guys. We're done with taking a stand. When we come back, boos and woos as well as some other fun treats. Don't go anywhere. More Sunday polls. It's coming up right after this.